It pains me to no end that I made a Top 5 Nintendo Switch Exclusives video and Pokemon couldn't, unsarcastically, be on that list. That's right, when it comes to Nintendo Switch, our mainline Pokemon experiences have been the biggest disappointments yet. Even more disappointing than the constant delays for sought-after games like Metroid Prime 4 and Bayonetta 3. And what is it that makes Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield such huge disappointments? Some might say our expectations are too high. Others might say it's from a lazy and tired development team. Me? Hmm, well, while I think some people might have unrealistic expectations, I have to unapologetically side with the second theory. Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise in existence. This fact has been repeated ad nauseum by now, and it's no secret. Why does Game Freak only have 140 employees? Why do they only hire one or two people at a time and call it a hiring spree? Why can severely under-budgeted studios like Platinum Games make Switch exclusives that look like this? Even with its far more complicated gameplay mechanics, but Pokemon still manages to look like this, with the most simplistic gameplay format there is. I mean, the menus aren't even responsive. It takes a full second every time I want to open it up, or choose an option in the battle menus. Well, to answer this question of quality in the easiest way possible, it's because why do more when you can get away with doing so little? If anything, Pokemon Sword and Shield may have solidified this trend with its booming sales. Or maybe not. The funny part is most of the people who got the games were disappointed, so maybe it's not as solidified as we might think. But whatever. I want us to make it oh so clear to the Pokemon company that this business practice of crapping out literal garbage is not okay. But how does an English-speaking American reach this Japan-based company who seems to have no will or intention of listening to its consumers when we buy anything they dump on us from their derrieres? Well, we can reach them with two things, expressing feelings through visuals, and by not consuming their products. If the next game looks like garbage as Sword and Shield were, don't buy it, even if they're Gen 4 remakes. As for now, let's go down a visual rabbit hole of everything that's wrong with Pokemon Let's Go and Pokemon Sword and Shield. Since Pokemon Let's Go is the more polished of the two, and released first, we'll start there. So Pokemon Let's Go seems to have served a very specific purpose with its release. Lowering the bar. For starters, they downed the roster to the original 151 Pokemon. That's downgrade number one. Next is an ugly art style with blocky character models. That's downgrade number two. After that, we have 3D characters moving as if they exist in a 2D space. Ugly turns, no animations for what would be simple cutscenes. Standing in place awkwardly, you get the picture. That's downgrade number three. Continuing a trend of having unresponsive and slow menus for seemingly no reason other than developer incompetency? That's downgrade number four. And last but not least, remaking a game in a region that's already been remade at least twice before. That's downgrade number five. Little to no thought had to be put into the development of this title, making it a prime cash grab because it's the first standard Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch, and as such, they knew sales would come in just because of that fact. Now, let's take a look at the much more atrocious abomination of the two, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Atrocity number one. The development coding is bloated as all hell. You want to know why such a low demand game struggles to run at 30 frames per second and has slow and unresponsive menus? Because every asset in the game is either copy and pasted or made anew for every reuse. This development practice bloats a game exponentially. Typically, when making a game, when you want to reuse an asset, whether it be something as simple as a flower or a blade of grass, you want to reference that file with code, not copy and paste it to bloat your game unnecessarily. 
People who don't know anything about game development try and say Sword and Shield look bad because the Switch is underpowered, but honestly, with how much is copy and pasted in this game, it speaks volumes of how powerful the Switch is to even run the game at all. Atrocity number 2. Continuing the trend of not having every Pokémon available. This wouldn't be so bad if there was actually a good reason for it, but neglecting mere kilobytes of data and lying about why you did so makes this a pointless downgrade. Which brings me to atrocity number three, lying to your customers. Um, well, just don't do that. Like, ever. Atrocity number four, lack of quality animations. Having moves be animated as moves rather than animated as the Pokémon is fine, but don't take a 3D model and bounce it up and down awkwardly, or rotate it on an axis this far into game development. It's so obviously ugly that I can't begin to imagine who thought this was okay. Also, this topic isn't just limited to battle animations. Why don't the Pokémon actually touch each other in battle like in PBR? Why do they stand so stiffly with zero idle animations? Why don't they interact in the overworld? Why do some mons not flap their wings to fly? Why do NPCs still move around or stand awkwardly as if they're still in a 2D space? Why are simple things that should be animated just cut out entirely and replaced with a fade to black? The list goes on and on. Atrocity number 5 improper size scaling of Pokémon. This is perhaps my biggest peeve with Sword and Shield. The wonder and magic of 3D is that you can present grand scale accurately. Why is Wailord barely bigger than a 10 year old? Why are some large Pokémon like Snorlax and Tyranitar shrunk down to be smaller than a 10 year old? This all makes no sense, and furthers to completely shatter immersion for players. It's so disappointing not getting to see large Pokémon present themselves as the massive, powerful beasts that they are. We literally had this with games made on the GameCube and Wii over a decade ago. Atrocity number 6, Insane Poppin. NPCs, Pokémon, trees, 2D grass assets, you name it, it all pops in merely two feet in front of you. I don't even need to explain why this is so awful. Not to mention the sound effect is annoying and accidentally running into things happens far too often as a byproduct. Atrocity number 7. 144 pixel textures in a 2019 AAA title. Why are all the trees in the wild area like this? This area was the biggest selling point of your game, and it looks like a beta field. Atrocity number 8. Tanking frame rates in such a low demand game. This normally happens when you're in the wild area with rain. I already explained why this happens. Atrocity number 9. Spinning Pokemon. Atrocity number 10. The online experience. Atrocity number 11. Follow Pokémon are implemented horribly. For one, they can't keep up. For two, they body block and get pushed. For three, they pop in and out of existence with a period of distance that they don't even pop out to pop up close to you, they just disappear into an imaginary void until you either run even further away from them, or walk closer to them again. And, Lastly, they always trail awkwardly behind you. We actually had a perfected version of Follow Pokémon in Let's Go, just one game ago. Why didn't they implement this properly? If you touched the Pokémon, they would go into their Pokéball. If they were too slow, they would go in their Pokéball and come back out to follow you again right next to you. Some Pokémon would run beside you, some in front of you, some all around you. It was realistic. They would notice things in the environment and run up to them. Why is this so botched in a newer game? To top all this off, they only follow you in two of the wild areas. Why? Game Freak, you suck! Atrocity number 12. A handholdy and linear campaign. Atrocity number 13. Boring Roots. Atrocity number 14. No dungeons or environmental puzzles. 
Atrocity number 15. Sudden weather changes in the wild area. Atrocity number 16. Some backgrounds aren't even made for battles or Pokemon camp, and will even take you into some magical wonderland. Atrocity number 17. Awkward segments from the lack of voice acting. Atrocity number 18, Dynamax. Giant Pokemon sure do make this Coliseum look tiny. Atrocity number 19, Bicycle Outfits. And finally, the last atrocity I'll be focusing on. When the game ends, it ends. There is nothing to go back to. No re-interactable NPCs. No fun minigames. No unlockable features. Nothing. It's just done. Empty and void of any more meaningful interaction. Not that there was much meaningful interaction in the first place. Now, with all that said and done, let's focus on some positives Pokemon could lean on so as to not be a complete disappointment ever again. First, Pokemon Camp is great, and they should really expand on even more ways to interact with your Pokemon outside of battle. Second, implement follow Pokemon as they were in Let's Go. Third, keep up the good Pokemon designs. I love most of the Pokemon, even still. But maybe we could use a break from new Pokemon for a while so you can make a good, polished game first. Fourth, transitioning to open world. And lastly, keep up the good music and decent pacing for the games. Sure, there are some hitches in Sword and Shield's pacing, but it was mostly because of hand-holding in a shoot-in side story near the end. Other than that, the campaign had a satisfying pace. I hope we can someday get the Pokemon experience we deserve. Whether it means a different development studio takes over the Pokemon IP, or if it means Game Freak actually hires more than two people at a time, they need to make their team as big as a AAA studio should be, especially such a profiting one, and stop grubbing money. Here's to hopes for the future. Hey guys, I've been really scared to discuss this topic when it comes to Pokemon because I'm terrified of not having all my thoughts included in any single video. I think I did a pretty good job though, for myself and for you, so please show support by subscribing. I'm so close to 1k subs and could really use the boost. Thanks for everything, and I hope you love my content.